Ausysms has a very powerful case management framework that can help you to create any kind of workflow processes. In this video, I'm not going to use that. My intention here is to just to show you how easily we can add approval and rejection kind of features in your list. So we are looking at my service studio. I have a reactive web application for asset requests. Uh, it has an entity called request has title, reason and date. Now to be able to uh, store approval and reject and kind of information in your records, you need to have one more entity uh, that could be a static entity. Static entities allows you to have uh, values in them already and it's easy for enumeration. So in this case, let this be a status. And the thing with the static entity is they can have records in it. So for example, processing, approved, and rejected. Uh, st uh, the static entities can also be used for drop down values, yes, no, list of countries, and so on and so forth, which does not change often. Now, once we have these kind of uh, entities in there, one is our request, the other one is status, let's do the modeling by linking it there. So the request entity has a reference to the status where the status ID for a record is stored in this variable. Thereafter, what we'll do is go to our main flow and do the usual thing of building the listing and detail screen. Now, because behind the scenes, we have done the modeling of letting the platform know the request has a status, platform will try to remember that. And if I see the listing page, for example, it's already bringing the data from those related tables. If I want to access this query and all, they're all available here. So this query get request is bringing the data from the request entity as well as from the status so that I have this information available here. Very good for me. Next, uh, what we'll do is maybe add column to add the feature for approving or rejecting. So in this case, we will have button that will trigger that. One button for approval and one button for rejection. Let's give them a relevant name. So this is approve and this is reject. We can also give them uh, some color here by using the style sheet. So reject perhaps a red color would be better and for approve uh, maybe a green color will be much better. Okay. Next what we'll do is provide the logic of what happens when somebody clicks on this these buttons. So for approval, let's double click. Now for approval what we'll do is just change the value of uh, the status field to approve. How does that look? We will access the request for the current selected record and for the status ID field we will change it to approve. And this is one of the benefits of using static entity. This is how enumeration works. And then we'll update the record by using the current operation available here and pass the current record to it which is this. And at the end, we can also display a message saying the request is approved. Success. And uh, then we can also refresh the query, refresh the query, the get request, so that the update is shown in the view, which is mainly to refresh the value here. Okay. Now we'll do also similar thing for the rejection. So for rejection, we will use assignment, same field. You can also try to copy paste from the other and just change the values. It works like that as well. So the status ID will become rejected. And then we'll update the request by using creator update. You can also use just the update. And then we will provide the value of the current record. Uh, perhaps again a message for rejection this time I think info should be good enough and then finally just like with it earlier refresh the query so the updates we can see on the screen and uh, I think looks okay just one advice uh, you, you might notice that these server actions when I'm calling here from the client side Platform is giving me a warning there, uh, highlighted in the uh, in the uh, in the ember text there. 
So what that means is some of these actions which are server side, you should be calling it as a server action. That's the advice. So you have to wrap them in a server action so people are not able to, you know, have some sort of security vulnerability in there. Okay. Otherwise, the function will work as it is. Now, the last thing I can do is this uh, approve and reject buttons. Uh, usage wise, they don't make sense if the record is already approved or rejected. So in this case, what I can do is select both of these buttons, put them maybe in a container can use the help of widget tree so two buttons are here we can put them in a container and the whole container I can put in a if for example and the condition could be show them only when the value of the status is not equal to or equals to entities that's how we can browse the static entities is equals to processing. So these buttons will only appear when the records uh, status here already is processing. If it's approved or rejected, these buttons will not appear. Uh, by the way, instead of buttons, you can also use uh, some icons for triggering the approval and rejection. That also makes the UX better. And uh, before I forget, uh, one last thing in the detail page itself, because the platform is trying to give me head start it is already bringing this value from the status static entity we don't need this so what I will need is to remove it from the form we don't want user to decide the status but what we'll do instead we will set it programmatically that the status of any submitted request by default becomes processing so it looks somewhat like this this status ID becomes processing and then it goes to create the record. Let's see how it looks. So one click publish. The application is ready. So this is the listing page. Uh, no record as of now. So let's create the first one about a request for laptop. Reason could be need to work. And date. A lot of, most of these fields are made non mandatory so it doesn't matter. And then when we create, we can see the values. So before I approve or reject this, let me create just one more so we can see the variance. Uh, travel card. Travel. Let this be. Okay, so we have two values and each of these uh, records have their own approval and reject button. So if I go ahead and click on the approval for the first one, you can see that's approved and the button disappeared afterward. That means that request is complete. For well, the second one, uh, we're going to use the reject and you can see when the rejection is done and the buttons disappear. So that's how you can add these kind of functionality into your list. Thanks for watching.